Cells respond to chemical messages produced by other cells or from the environment. Cell signaling begins when the chemical message, or ligand, is received by a target cell. Ligands can be peptides, proteins, steroids, or small chemicals. Ligands bind to specific cell structures called receptors. Some receptors are found in the cell on the nuclear membrane, while most receptors are embedded in the cell membrane. Receptors have several key domains or regions. The ligand binding domain is extracellular and has a chemical structure that is specific to the ligand. The transmembrane domain anchors the protein into the plasma membrane. Some transmembrane domains actually have channels for transport. In a gated ion channel, the binding of the ligand regulates the opening or closing of a transmembrane channel. Finally, membrane receptors have a very important intracellular domain. When a ligand binds to a receptor, it causes a conformational change in the intracellular domain. In other words, a shape change which alters the function of the domain proteins. One important example of a membrane receptor in eukaryotes are G-protein coupled receptors. G-protein coupled receptors have an intracellular domain associated with a group of molecules called G-proteins. When the ligand binds, a conformational change in the receptor causes the G-proteins to break off or dissociate. This is the start of a signal transduction pathway. Signal transduction describes the series of chemical events that take place from ligand binding to an actual response by the cell. Let's stick with this G-protein example to follow a typical series of events in a signal transduction pathway. The dissociated G-proteins can interact with and activate other molecules such as channels or enzymes. Here, the activated enzyme begins the mass production of molecules that will be involved with activating the cellular response. While the ligand is the original message, the molecules mass produced by the enzyme are called second messengers. Because the binding of a single ligand message results in the production of many second messengers, this step is called signal amplification. One of the most common second messengers is a molecule called cyclic AMP. The next step in signal transduction is the phosphorylation cascade. Phosphorylation describes the addition of phosphate. In biology, it's really important to understand that adding or removing phosphate results in shape change. This shape change can activate or deactivate a molecule. Cyclic AMP activates molecules called protein kinases, which literally have the job of transferring phosphate groups. In the cascade, kinases transfer phosphate groups from one molecule to the next to the next, activating and deactivating proteins along the way, like a relay race. In fact, kinases are often called relay molecules in the signal transduction pathway. Eventually, the phosphorylation cascade reaches a target protein. When this protein is phosphorylated, a specific cellular response is achieved. Examples of target proteins include enzymes that control important metabolic processes and transcription factors that regulate gene expression. Interpreting the final response of a signal transduction pathway can be tricky, but it's all about understanding how the final target protein is affected and what the function of that target protein is. From ligand binding to cellular response, signal transduction is a sequential series of cellular events. Disruption at any point in the pathway can prevent downstream events and alter cellular response.